Hi guys, I'm Keta from IT Life Club and in this clip I'll be talking about the change management process. I think that by now you are already familiar with the way things are going to go, but if somehow this is your first clip, let me walk you through how things will unfold. We will start off with a definition, go over the personas that are usually involved in the change management process, then we will continue with a real life use case and finally we will cement these learnings by going through the process diagram. Ok so now that we know what is waiting for us, let us dive in and learn more about the definition. The process of change management is responsible for controlling the life cycle of all changes and works to enable beneficial changes to be made with minimal disruption to IT services. One of the objectives of change management is to ensure changes are recorded, assessed, authorized, prioritized, planned, tested, implemented, documented, and reviewed in a controlled manner. If you take a moment and go over what I have just said, you will realize that I have basically walked you through the process. Of course, at a high level, and that is because as the lecture unfolds, we will recap go into more details and of course share some examples. For now though, I have divided the theory in a more friendly way and that is into three pillars, goal, objective and categories, so let's see what this means. Starting with goal, as mentioned before, we can mention controlling the life cycle of all the changes with the outcome of minimal disruption to IT services. Then we have the objective for which I'm going to say that following the process thoroughly and in a controlled manner is a must. The last pillar is occupied by the category types and these are the following. Normal changes which require approval from a predefined persona and cab. The standard change which does not require any approval and are probably the most common changes. And lastly, the emergency changes which are unplanned and require authorization from CAB. What is CAB is what you are asking? Well, it stands for Change Advisory Board and is basically a group of persons that are working together to analyze all possible risks in case the change will be implemented. Once the CAB meetings or discussions are done, they have to either approve or reject the emergency change, as simple as that. Let me now present you with some real-life, IT-related examples of change management. An example of an emergency change would be to restart the VPN service as it is overloaded and it's running very slow. Various users have complained about it, a problem has been raised and now it's time for an emergency change. Another example of a standard change this time would be to decommission a server that is no longer needed. This has been raised by the local IT, they know that they have replaced this server with a newer one with better specifications, and since they don't need it any longer, they don't want to have it registered in the domain or in the configuration management database. A small observation in case you are wondering why they are raising this change since they already know what they did. Well, that is because it is a best practice in the IT world to keep track of any changes you are doing within the organization, infrastructure, processes, budgets, etc. That's it in terms of definition and example guys, we should have a good understanding of how change management works, we are making good progress, but we are still far away from the finish line, so let us continue the learning path and discuss about the personas as well. Remember that the problem management process was interfacing with almost all the processes? If you haven't seen that clip, I highly encourage you to watch it either here on YouTube or on my website at itlifeclub.com. When it comes to process interfacing, change management is no different than problem and incident management. Let me enumerate the most common personas and explain you their role in this process. The end user is the first persona, he is the affected one, just that he doesn't know that his reported incident actually requires a request for change in order to address it. Just don't rush into blaming the end user that he is not aware of the necessity of a change request. After all, why would he care? He just wants his issue to be fixed as soon as possible and that's pretty much it. 
The next persona on our list is the problem manager who also interacts with the change manager in case his problem requires it to do so. In our end-to-end -end problem management demonstration clip, we have learned that in order to fix the router for good, a configuration was supposed to be done and that could only be achieved through a request for change. The incident manager also plays a big role here and that is mainly because a major incident and not only can be fixed by applying a change. Usually the procedure would indicate so and the incident manager would know that he needs to get in touch with the change manager and go for an emergency change. Since we are talking about emergency change, I couldn't miss out the cab team who as you already know, are responsible for analyzing the impact of the emergency change and also do know that it is their final decision on whether that change will be accepted or not. I will be honest and tell you that there are more personas to add here, I just didn't want to get you bored from the very beginning, but as the lecture will unfold, some other team members will be introduced to you. For now, let us discuss about a real-life change management related use case. Please pay attention to this part as we are going to use the exact use case in the ServiceNow demonstration clip. To continue on the same thread, I will get back to the use case that we have mentioned in the problem management demonstration. And if you remember, there was a point where the problem manager had to request a change in order to adjust the configuration of the faulty router and thus resolving the problem. Now guys, if you are wondering if I'm out of ideas, the answer is no, I just want to continue the thread so that it makes even more sense and also understand how the ITSM processes are connected to each other. The objective of the demonstration is to understand how a request for change is raised and what are the steps that the change manager has to take in order to go through the change request lifecycle. To make things better, as a bonus, I am going to also walk you through a different standard change that is already available for us in the ServiceNow instance. Till then though, let us have a look at how the change management process works. Given the fact that the change management process interfaces with so many other processes, its starting point or trigger can also vary from service request management, incident management, problem management, event management and many others. What do you think all these processes have in common? I will tell you what it is. The need for a change in the IT services, processes or infrastructure. Now going forward, here is a good tip. To make his job easier, the change manager should always ask himself the 7 R's. Who raised the change request? What is the reason behind the change? Return required from the change? What are the risks involved in the requested change? Who is responsible for creating, testing and implementing the change phases? How many resources are required in order to deliver the change? And finally, what is the relationship between the suggested change and other changes? Back to our process diagram now, let us assume that a change request has been identified and raised. The RFC can be created by the change manager himself which is the best practice or by other process owners if the system is configured in such way. After having it created, he will assess the change by looking at different fields such as priority, category, subcategory and many other that we will be going through in the demonstration clip. Right after this step, if the change is normal or an emergency one, it will require approval from the change authority of the CAB team and if not, it will automatically skip to the next step which is the schedule one. A change, regardless of its type, will cause an impact in the system and therefore the change manager has to take into account the time frame in which the implementation of the change will cause the least impact. Makes sense, right? After scheduling it, as mentioned, the involved team has to actually deliver by implementing the change in the system. Right after that, a review or a series of tests will follow in order to determine if the implementation was successful and lastly the final state of the change which is closed. As a note, there is also a cancelled state which is not common but one might use it if the change is no longer needed. We are done with the change management process theory guys. As stated throughout this clip, 
A complete demonstration for the same process will follow in ServiceNow and you can check it out on my website at itlifeclub.com. No need to memorize the URL as I will be dropping it in the description below. That's it for now, I hope that you have enjoyed this clip, found it useful and if you did, give us a like, comment if there are questions or suggestions and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.